All right, today I'm going to go over the Ready Seal Stain colors. There's a total of eight colors. The wood that I put it on is um, pine, pressure treated, decking board, probably several years old and sitting in my shed, so it hasn't been aged color wise, but it's very dried out. Um, so I'm gonna go over those eight colors, one coat and two coat, as well as putting some on some paper, white paper towel so you can kind of see the pigment in it. Um, by the way, the color I went with was mahogany, and in this video, I will show you my finished results on my fence um, that was sprayed on with like a, um, a sprayer, an oil uh, rated sprayer, pump sprayer, about 80 bucks off Amazon, holds two gallons. I'll put it in the link in the description. It worked pretty well. Just one coat. I probably will do a second coat next year. I just did one coat this year. It looks pretty decent. Um, also, I have a lot of fencing. It took about 25 gallons and just for the cost reasons did one coat this year. And I also will give you a few tips and tricks, um, depending on the type of fencing you're spraying, that I wish I had known. Um, so let's get to the colors first. So we'll kind of go in a clockwise direction here. So we've got 12, eight colors. Natural, also listed as light oak, pecan, dark walnut, mission brown, burnt hickory, mahogany, redwood, and natural cedar. So let's do that in a clockwise um, direction of colors here. Uh, now this, these were applied probably well over a month ago, so definitely the true color, but these were just applied with disposable cheap foam brush, a uh, different one for each color. Uh, definitely gonna get different applications based on what type of wood and how the application method, and I do think spraying definitely puts much heavier coat on it than a brush would. So this is, so this top board is one coat, this bottom board is two coat. So that's natural, which just adds just a little bit of color. That's very, uh, not really noticeable, just a little bit of color. Then pecan, which is just slightly darker than natural. Once again, so this is one coat, this is two coats. Then we go to the next color, which is your dark walnut. Once again, just a little bit of color. And then when you start really getting up on the colors, now we're at the Mission Brown. You can really start to see the, starting to get some pigment. And then Burnt Hickory has a strong color. You really can see it even on the first coat. You really see it on the second coat. Very dark. And the color I went with, which I consider has the second strongest pigment, is Mahogany. So one coat Mahogany, Two coat mahogany. I think at second strongest on the pigment. Definitely the strongest in the reds by a long shot. Then you got your redwood, which is definitely less pigment than your mahogany. As you can tell, on its first coat is almost very light. Second coat you get a little bit of color. Maybe a little bit different on cedar for sure, but on pine, redwood not much there. And then natural cedar. So let's do a brief real skin overview real quick. Now let's break those colors down on some paper towels. As well as I'm going to put some on some wood as well. So you can kind of see what it looks like on the wood. So let's start with our natural. Now these things, I'll put a link in the description. These you can get them on Amazon. I actually got them directly from the manufacturer. It was 10 bucks. That includes shipping. I don't think any charge for shipping. It's $10 for this little sample pack of all the colors. Uh, well worth it in my opinion. You just go to the website, uh, Ready Seal. So I'm just mixing this up in this packet. So you can get an idea of what the pigment looks like. That is natural. And then, so I'll put some natural on this wood. That way you can get an idea of what 
it looks like. Yeah, pigment of it. That's what it's going to kind of look like when it's wet. Very light pigment. Very uh, not a dark color at all. It's called natural for a reason, right? Just a light oak color. And the pecan is very similar. It's just a little bit more pigment than the natural. So that's pecan. And we'll re re recap all these colors after I get all these on these paper towels. Dark walnut. Now we're starting to really get some color. I'm just going to let these drip on here. Mission Brown. The darker the pigment, the more you really need to mix them up. That it separates. Mission Brown. I'm just going to go over these real quick and then we'll recap them here. This burnt hickory is basically black. Yeah, like I said, the color I like the most, which was the mahogany. My wife agreed as well. I think it is the best color on wood. Obviously, you like what you like, but I think reds look a lot better. And then natural cedar is the last one. So let's recap these colors on the paper towels. We have natural pecan. Dark walnut. That should be the mission. Actually, let's get that mission brown back. Mission brown. Burnt hickory. Very dark. Mahogany. Redwood. Natural cedar. And I got the liquid on here. So you can kind of see what the tent looks like. Natural pecan, dark walnut, mission brown, burnt hickory. It's getting very dark. Mahogany, Redwood, which is just lighter of uh, mahogany, in my opinion, and natural cedar. So let's recap these right quick. Super slow here. All right, so I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to show you my fence which is pressure treated uh, pine. Uh, probably been there for about a month now, three weeks to a month, so it's the true color. And then once again, it was a sprayed on application. So let's get outside. All right, so we are outside. You can see this is mahogany sprayed on that has fully dried. That's what it is. You see, I had a lot of fencing. It took 25 gallons, over 400 feet of fencing, two gates, split rail.
you'll notice some color difference between the board and these little runners down here and the difference is these board deck boards are probably these are i think ground rated pressure treated these are just standard pressure treated um, so there's less chemical and stuff in it and just a different absorption rate same thing if your post you may notice a difference but overall really easy product to use they call it goof proof there's no laps run marks etc just spray it on roll it on whatever it'll soak in and spread its own stuff out but there is one mistake that you don't want to make that i made and that is you want to do your inside and your outside the same day so instead of trying to do the project i try to do the complete inside then do the complete outside it's best to break it up and split it in half so if you know if you have two hours to spray that day do one hour outside one hour inside because what will happen is if you let it fully dry overnight and you go and you spray on the opposite side what's going to happen is you're going to end up with run over some of your product is going to run over on your fencing and then what you end up with is you end up with some areas with some darker splotches basically because they end up getting a true second coat um, it's not very noticeable on this camera but in person there are a few areas. Let's see if we can find a good one here. Of an area. There's just not really going to pick up very well. But basically what ended up happening. There's a few little spots. That are darker than others on here. Um, it's kind of hard to see. It's definitely gotten a lot better. As it's cured in. Um, over a while. Let's see if we can find a good spot. Alright I'm going to try to give you. A, a, an example on the inside. Not really perfect, but if you can see the way this wood looks here versus here, you notice there's more color in it. See, I know it's kind of bright out here, but that should show hopefully. There's definitely a little more color right here than there is here. And what happened was it's because one side was done one day, it had the opportunity to fully dry, then the next side was done the other day, and with a split rail fencing, you're going to end up with some runover. That's going to happen regardless with this stuff. It's very thin. So what you want to do is you want to break up a certain area. So let's say you're going to do 50 feet of fencing, or it's a timeline. Do your outside. I would recommend doing the inside personally first, because you get more runover. I found on the inside, because of this wiring, wanting to run over. Do your inside first. Then go on the outside and do that same area. Do both sides the same day and it'll all dry uniform and you won't end up with having areas where it ends up darker and lighter because you basically ended up creating kind of a second coat because it was allowed to fully dry. Um, this is easy fix, by the way. When I do my second coat next year in the spring, this should all be uniform. And like I said, it just did take about 25 gallons of stain over 400 feet of split rail fencing with two gates. Uh, which is around $150 per gallon, so $750 worth of stain. Uh, that's kind of the reasons why I just stuck with one coat for this application, just because of the cost. But anyway, if you have any questions about this product, um, anything you would like to know, just you know, leave a comment. I'll get back to you. I have a description to the samples, a description to my sprayer, which is around $80. I do recommend also buying a gallon of mineral spirits. Get it at Walmart, way cheaper than uh, buying it a gallon on Amazon because you're going to need to clean out your um, sprayer if you're using brushes, clean up with mineral spirits. And I also have a link description to the product, which I got on Amazon. I don't really like the idea of having, having to have some person move around five gallons of stain um, shipping it. But it was $150 per five gallons. Lowe's or Home Depot do not carry it at all in my area. There are maybe like a few like home improvement stores that may carry it. You can check on the website if you have any areas and see what they're charging. But yeah, so I got it off Amazon. Anyway, till next time, y'all have a good day.